All right, the uh, video kind of response to Nick, the modern mystic. It's kind of said that no government will work without oil, and so I just wanted to dispute that a little bit. And uh, it's also a response to a couple other comments by other people here and there. Um, Zach made another video where he's sort of saying, again, he's blaming civilization for human problems <laughs> rather than blaming the real source of the problem, which is the ability of human beings um, to have this very complex psychology. We don't just um, extrude uh, out of some machine and pop out all alike. No, we pop out with very different interests, very different um, sensibilities, um, and that's where this all goes to hell. That's where the government thing falls apart. That's where the even your little civilization thing falls apart, because those diverse as human societies will rub up against each other in very negative ways. They will overpopulate unsustainably. Um, it's another political sort of issue, so it's sort of in this whole government and, and prohibitions and controls and dracon you know, the draconian Nazi philosophy that people sit there and try to pigeonhole me into, um, which is just such bullshit. Um, you know, these, these assholes who think the world's going to run just fine with no organization, no, no establishment of any rules of the game. Like, you can have a game, you can play baseball, you can have boxing, you can have any kind of sport, and without rules, everything will be just fine. Nobody will fucking cheat, nobody will do anything, no umpires necessary. It's just fucking unrealistic, silly, mush bullshit. Um, these fuckers who talk about freedom and don't really understand that there is no freedom without responsibility first um, are just that, assholes. Um, we consolidate power as individual control. Um, we, we essentially can dictate the destiny of other people with that power and control. This goes on every day in our lives. There's no, you know, Captain Austin made stup some stupid video um, comparing um, social freedom versus economic freedom. You can't have anything, it's any kind of absolute economic freedom without destroying any kind of social liberty. It's just impossible, and vice versa, really. Um, but the whole idea of economic freedom, all you need is economic fairness. <laughs> you know, that, that, all you need in government is fairness, a fair fight. Uh, let these individuals, these pockets of diversity, these different interests, have a fair fight. Let them argue for their position. Let them have a fair voice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the dice are going to have to be rolled. Um, there's going to have to be some decisions made, and people have to be comfortable with that. But there's people out there who just won't be. Uh, you know, these, these, these assholes who call me a Nazi um, are the same assholes who defend their gun ownership by saying they might need to overthrow the government. And I'm sure they're going to overthrow that government as a minority, as a minority of population. They're going to decide that, no, we don't like what you're doing. We don't like your policy. So we're going to, we're going to tell you what the world will look like, you majority. And so they, they sit there and rationalize that somehow they can sit there and talk about the mob um, when it's a majority, but they don't understand the idea of a mob when it's a minority. And uh, so they just want to, um, they just basically want the freedom to be Timothy McVeigh's. And that's just completely idiotic, preposterous, insane, and it's certainly closer to um, a classic definition of fascism, which is some elitist group who thinks they should have control. Um, I've always defended in, in the idea of democracy, and the higher we can make that consensus number for, for decision making, the better. I mean, for some things, like where to put a stop sign, it would be idiotic to require three-quarters of the people to make the decision, yeah, a mere majority should be enough, okay? And then on important issues of, of fundamental liberty, yeah, when, when something has to be decided, you know, uh, imposing, forcing people to be vaccinated against a plague or, um, you know, not, I mean, some kind of question where there's some balance of the, the obvious social good versus individual rights, well, yeah, when those kind of decisions have to be made, then it should be a three-quarters majority. And, and a good constitution will dictate that. A good constitutional will, will protect individual rights from anything else but that three-quarters consensus or something even higher. Um, I wouldn't mind having a, a level where each, each, the, for, for each kind of liberty, there's a higher standard for compromising that liberty. 
but let's be realistic. There's no, you're, you're never going to have a system. There's people in this country who want to murder. There's people in this country who want to rape. They would vote for the right to rape or the right to murder. And um, we, we can sit there and say there's differences between um, these ethical decisions. There's people who think they have a right to own slaves, theoretically, uh, or should have that right. Um, so so there's, there's all kinds of people that have very different philosophical perspectives. And you have to have a system that gives them an opportunity to, to make their case, argue their case, but then the majority is ultimately going to have to make the decision. And, and if you start deciding that some voices should be louder than others, which our system basically does, um, you know, then, then the whole thing breaks down. All right, so get back to Nick's point. Um, he doesn't, you know, he says there's no governance without oil, okay, that, that we can't come up with any, any idea of civilization that's going to work in a world where there's, um, uh, where we're past peak oil. I think that's just nonsense. There's huge amounts of waste in how we use oil now. There's, there's plenty of fucking oil out there. We just have to use it more responsibly. Uh, we have to use energy resources more responsibly. And uh, that can be done and uh, without uh, being draconian. Um, you know, just uh, stupid little examples. I mean, you know, I don't want to beat up on this sports issue, but you know what? We wasted billions and billions of dollars worth of energy and human resources to put on this stupid show, a stupid entertainment show. Um, people can be entertained in more efficient ways. Uh, that, that, that kind of crap can be the kind of crap we can cut out of social living until we get past this crisis. Um, and by doing that, we will have enough oil for our bread and for the substance of our entertainment, for the substance of feeding our addictions. Uh, but we don't have to sit there and, and just wallow in the bullshit. And there's so much of our life is built on bullshit. Again, as to Zach and his, his you know, he keeps using this word civilization. Civilization is not the fucking enemy. The enemy is human psychology, all right? We can see it right here on YouTube. There's this, all this controversy, all these fights get started. And, and look, look at what the rhetoric's turned into. Um, it's, it, there's nothing of substance. It's just personal attacks. It's just trying to find a cheat, a, a leverage. It's just finding a better way to, you know, kick your opponent in the balls because you can't face him. You can't sit there and have a fair fight. Um, that's all these people are about. Um, they don't challenge anything. And so to get to that point, I mean, I want to be blowing my own horn, but there's been some, some rhetoric that uh, my solutions videos aren't worth anything, that these aren't, that they don't, they don't constitute any contribution. And it's just such bullshit. One of the, the major things I have pushed is a, a, a change in our democratic process. Uh, the, one of them was kind of simple, instant runoff voting. That's, other people have thought of that. That's been generally, it's got some support out there. People, some people understand what it is. But that's the worst part of this, is these assholes with their rhetoric don't even understand how these systems work. They, they wouldn't even know a solution if you put it in front of them, because they don't have, they don't have the intellectual capital to even recognize a fucking solution, because they don't know how the systems work now. And uh, the current system now, we, have, we, we don't have a real democracy. There's this thing called direct democracy. Basically, the idea would be uh, every person would vote on every bill and, uh, you know, on the Internet or through some other electronic method, and uh, you, you allow people to um, run the government. Now, the failure there would be is that most people aren't going to take the time to know what the consequences of something are. It's like the propositions in California are often kind of stupid and idiotic because people are voting based on some simplistic idea rather than understanding what the complex effect of something's going to be in the real world over the long term. Um, so you have to, the ideal in my opinion is to obviously, I, it just seems obvious that you want to keep as much representation as possible, but you want to make that representation as informed and as intelligent as possible. And so you do that by having representatives. You don't sit there, direct democracy, you just put another step in and say, okay, you, you vote for a representative who's going to be knowledgeable, who's going to read the bills, who's going to hear the arguments, all the arguments, who's going to have to sit on the floor of a, of a deliberative body and hear the fucking other arguments. And it's, that's, that's going to be very important to the decision making. So you can vote for an advocate that, that, that has your interest, that you're confident is an honest and decent person that's going to be representing you because you have this huge open choice instead of this closed system we currently have. Um, and we can build that system. So, so you could vote for anybody theoretically on earth. And if enough people vote for him, he would be your representative. But you'd always have somebody you voted for deciding who was going to represent you in the deliberative body. And then when they got to that body, that's when the compromise starts. But the compromise only happens through the argument process, through the fair fucking fight. And we don't have anything close to that now. Now you, you cast a vote in a, in a, in a, in a rigged district and uh, whoever wins steals the representation, the vote, of all the people who didn't vote for the asshole. It's idiotic. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything close to democracy. It just gives the same majority in <clears throat> you know, 50 or 50,000 voting districts um, all the power. And it closes out any um, 
uh, ideological um, group who isn't um, segregated in some geographic district. If you're not segregated, you will have no representation. That's the way this system works, the current system. It's just fundamentally broken. And uh, no one's talking about that, but that's a huge problem. And it also creates all this geographic pork, all this, all this interest that's completely focused on give me more money, give me more tax dollars back. So you have all these states and you have all these counties. They're all competing with each other, not on any kind of, not, not for any good cause, but for a selfish cause. And that's just completely corrosive to having any idea of a, a nation. Um, because then it just becomes a bunch of individual parts fighting for themselves. And, and that selfishness will not create a nation. It will not create something, it will not create good national social policy. It'll, it destroys that because everybody's fighting for their own fucking selfish interests. And it can't, just can't, you can have people argue for it, but they can't be allowed to win. And, and the system now allows them to win. Those self-interests are allowed to win because they trade off um, valuable interest in this pre-compromise, this compromise that happens through the political party process that destroys the integrity of anybody you vote for. They've already sold out to interests they have no interest in. But